In today's video, I wanna to talk to you about the harsh reality of male hair loss and what actually works. My name's Will Quay. I'm a clinical London-based trichologist and specialist scalp micropigmentation artist helping you guys that are struggling with hair loss. Okay, so as the title suggests, I wanna to talk to you about the harsh realities of male hair loss and what actually works and what I believe doesn't work, what to spend your money on and what to hold back on. So male pattern hair loss, it can hit you hard. For some of you guys out there, it's just not a bother. You know, you just get on with your lives and it doesn't affect you at all. For other guys, like I say, I see people in the clinic day in, day out, it can affect them more so to do with physical appearance, but what's inside and, you know, self-esteem and confidence levels. And, you know, it's important to understand what it is, why it happens, just so you've got a plan. So for most men, the first signs you're gonna see of male hair loss will be a receding hairline. You're gonna to start to possibly lose your temples, or you may get like a diffuse thinning all over where your hair on top is, not quite as dense as what's going on in the back and the sides, and a little bit of hair loss in the crown. Now, when this sort of starts to happen, it can trigger a little bit of anxiety, self-esteem issues, you know. You may not start to feel yourself, and you wonder why, but there's that something inside of you that is, you know, bothering you, and you, you might catch yourself in a reflection, or someone might take a photo at a wedding, and you catch your crown, and it's not quite what it used to be, and, you know, it's something that's happening that you haven't chose to happen. You haven't chose this to happen. There's a lot of things in life that we can make choices on, but when it comes to hair loss, it doesn't discriminate. It, you know, if it wants to happen, it's going to happen and what you can do about it. Because of that, that is why I feel we get these feelings. Another thing to note is that, you know, if, if you're watching this video now and you're going through this, you're suffering, you know, you're not alone. Over two thirds of males by the age of 35 will experience some sort of hair loss and the numbers just increase as you get older. By 50, 85% of males will experience some form of hair loss. And while we're talking about how common it is, you know, it doesn't make it easier and I totally get that. I honestly do. I see clients in here every day, every week, every month, every year and you know there's a common denominator when it comes to hair loss and you can see look I'm a bubbly guy, I'm a smiley guy. I'm not smiling when I'm saying this to you but I want you to know that I'm in your corner. There is something you can do about it. Me, I'm a little bit different to most SMP artists out there and, and the same with most trichologists out there. There's not many of us out there that do the two. I'm a very experienced scalp micropigmentation artist and, and a clinical trichologist, so, so my knowledge is extensive. So you might be suffering with hair loss. There's many forms of hair loss from non-scarring alopecias to scarring alopecias to what I most commonly see in males is androgenic alopecia, otherwise known as male pattern hair loss. So when it comes to androgenic Androgenic alopecia, it's largely down to the hormones, um, in particular DHT, which stands for dihydrotestosterone. And what that does, it binds to the receptors in your hair follicles and shrinks and miniaturizes the hair over a period of time. And what you'll notice is that the hair will become finer, weaker, and the density starts to disappear. And eventually, it will just stop growing altogether. So as I said earlier, it usually starts in the temples and the crown. I have done a video on the progression of male pattern hair loss, which I will put up here or here. Do check that video out if you get a chance. Um, yeah, so there are other factors that can contribute to the amount of hair loss that you're going through, i.e. stress, diet, medical conditions, but DHT is normally the main culprit when it comes to male pattern hair loss. Okay, so before we get into what actually I believe can help you with male pattern hair loss, let's talk about what I believe won't help you and things you need to watch out for. So unless you're deficient in something, i.e. vitamin D, which is a, a strong one, and I would highly recommend you check your levels for that, vitamins and supplements when it comes comes to your hair loss, I personally believe is not gonna help you when it comes to male pattern hair loss. If you want more information on that, and you want your blood works checked, drop us a message. We can book you in for a trichology consultation and we can get into further depths when it comes to that. But in my experience, vitamin D, other than that, Nah. So you're also going to find like these shampoos on the market that claim to help with hair growth. Now, whilst it may help with scalp care, i.e. any sort of dermatitis or um, eczema, but when it comes to hair growth, not buying it. 
Put it this way, I don't believe there's no shampoo on the market that's gonna help stop DHT from shrinking your hair follicles. Other things to avoid are these like TikTok home remedies like onion juice, coconut juice, and massaging those sort of products into your scalp. It's not gonna help with male pattern hair loss. Now, I'm not saying these things to be negative, but I just wanna point these out to you because I wouldn't want you wasting your time and money on things that are just not gonna help. Okay, so now we get to the good part, things that I believe can actually help you when it comes to your male pattern hair loss. So there's a product called Minoxidil. You may see it in forms called Regain or Rogaine. It can be found in different forms, but the most commonly used is a topical foam, and the Minoxidil will slow down the rate of hair loss. And in some cases, regrowth is visible. But just so you know, results can take around three to six months before you actually start to notice a difference. Now, another thing to note is that once you're taking minoxidil, it's usually the case of you have to continue taking it. So please, please, please check in with your GP or your trichologist or whoever you need to speak to regarding this hair loss and check with them and make sure that it's gonna be a fit for you. I personally like the holistical roots, but it's whatever works for you. Finasteride is another option that we do see results with, and that's a pill that you take daily that will reduce DHT level. So as most things, there will be pros and cons and side effects and minoxidil and finasteride may come with side effects. So please check with your GP or your doctor or someone responsible that is guiding you in this way before you even think about taking this. Okay, the next one I'm gonna talk about is scalp micropigmentation, SMP, which is probably why you're on this page in the first place. And this is where I can help you. Again, so like all options, there are pros and cons. Now, scalp micropigmentation is not just pro, pro, pro. There are some cons as well. Now, it won't make your hair grow back. So it's not gonna contribute into um, stopping the miniaturization of your hair. It's not gonna make your hair grow back. And you will not be able to, in most cases, have hair of any length when you get scalp micropigmentation. It's gonna be aimed at you guys that wanna buzz your hair short. And depending on where you are on the Norwood scale, get that hairline back in and give yourself some full density, just so it looks like you've just gone whop with a shaver, and then people are probably coming up to you going, why are you shaving your hair? You've got a full head of hair, let it grow. And then you can go, no, nah, I just like it shaved. That's the flex. Another option would be hair transplant surgery. Now, again, I'm not an expert when it comes to hair transplants. I'm not a hair transplant surgeon, don't shoot me down, but I believe they can work if you're using it to regain your hairline, get your corners or your peaks back in. In my opinion, I'm yet to see a full Norwood 7 that has got complete hair loss on the back of the scalp and wants to get a full flock of hair and it looks full, completely full with no other solutions or uh, any other products being used. Now, in most cases, you will have to couple your hair transplant with either minoxidil, finasteride or both. So just be sure that you know that before you agree to get a hair transplant. But I have seen a couple of good results, not many, but a couple of good ones. So check your options and make sure you're speaking to someone that really, really does know their stuff. So I'm just gonna close this one off with saying, look, male pattern hair loss, it, it, you know, let's not sugarcoat it. It's, it's gonna be a harsh reality that you're gonna have to deal with, but there are options out there for you. I've listed a few that I think are gonna be best that would work, which in my opinion is a good thing. So there are options and you are not alone. And if you want to discuss this any further with either myself or anyone, please do not hesitate. If you've got any questions regarding what I've spoke about in today's video, please drop them in the comments below. All of our details can be found on www.scoutnation.co.uk. See you on the next one.